So you're a student and you are modeling the represent volume element behavior of a hybrid composite. And you are at the stage where you want to see how you can actually undertake the tensile deformation analysis of such hybrid composite. And there's uncertainty as to what kind of boundary condition you want to use, how to apply your load in order to get the deformation that you want. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. And I'm a university lecturer with extensive experience in terms of representable element modeling. And I've been publishing videos on the YouTube channel about this. That's precisely what I want to show you. If you're interested in this video, then sit back and relax as I begin to show you how you can actually go ahead and do this. So as we start, um, I'm going to talk a little bit around the theory of what we really intend to do. So basically, this is the representative element we are working with. It's already a cubic representative volume element with two fiber systems, a pineapple fiber system and an A glass fiber system. So if you look at the in view from the side, this is what you get. So a 200 by 200. However, I'm equally dividing them. So you've got the first layer being 100 micron and the second layer being another 100 micron. So everything is made of an epoxy matrix. However, on the top fiber bundle, number two fiber bundle is made of the pineapple component and fiber. And the second fiber bundle is made of an A glass fiber system. So it's a micro scale representative volume element of the problem and that's where we are going to start from so this is probably the kind of model that you have and you want to see how to undertake a tensile deformation of this so the points to note here at this point and second point which determine the origin of the two layers so the material system that we're going to work with in this case so these are the properties of the material the epoxy the pineapple and the e-glass fiber in terms of young modules yield and their diameters their poisson ratios and their volume fraction so the fibers are all going to be treated as linear elastic with plastic yielding. The case studies that we're going to be studying here would be these three. So a case one being a tensile deformation in the x-axis, the case two y deformation in the z-axis, and case three a longitudinal axis. And if you want to see how they are going to be represented, so this is precisely the kind of problem we want to see. And so I'm going to show how you can do this within Abacus. All right, so we are going to set up this model within Abacus, and here we are. I've already created this representative volume element and I've shown all the detailed steps of how you can go about doing this so that in the end you're generating a model that looks like this with all the fibers in place, the base here being the matrix, the being the epoxy and the red region being the pineapple and the sort of cream region being the matrix and I've meshed it and set up the model properly and I've made an extensive video to show you how you can do this so if you are you want to see how this this was made this is the video that will show you the detail of how you're going to do this what we're going to focus on in this video is simply how to apply the tensile deformation okay so what we are going to first do here is that we open the hybrid composite model that we have here and so i'm just going to look at the assembly module everything the assembly is fine so we need to create a few sets so i'm just going to turn off this so the first set here will be the x front so we'll do the x front and we're going to basically tell it that i want to select based on faces and that faces will be based on a face angle so we select here so this is the x front face so we'll do the same thing the y top face which will be what you see here and the x front set front set so we hover around here so select everything in front and we'll click that done so we're going to turn it at the back so that we can also get the other remaining sets that we need to create all the boundary set that this system wants so the other one will be x back so if this is the x axis so this line this will be the x back and y base would be what you see here okay and then the z back will be what you see around here okay so then we can go back to the end. so this is sort of the model so we're going to use a reference point so to get the reference point to apply our loads so i'm going to prove this point and basically it tells us it's at 200 0 and 0. so within the assembly module so we go to tools reference and this is the position however i'm just going to move it forward a bit to let's say maybe 220 you know 210 so it's very close to that point so i can now create a reference point set as well so we've got a reference point set which will be what you have here all right so we've got that model set up that way so that's what you need to do under the assembly module so our loading step will be lo so a static general is enough for us to work with and we can then look at our history output so reference point history output so i'm going to start first by 
a reference point history output associated with that. So for the tensile deformation, so it will be RF1 and U1. So reaction force in the one and reaction displacement in the one direction will be okay for what happens at that reference point. So then we can think about our boundary conditions. So we have to fix the back and the base of this. So I'm going to have X back boundary condition. So let's use that and it will be an initial case associated with that. So we'll select the set of the X back, highlight what we want. And in this case, we need to constrain it in the one direction. So we'll do the same thing, Y base boundary condition. So what is our Y base? So we want to constrain it in the Y direction. And then Z back boundary condition. So that will be the Z back and we constrain it in the third axis. So we've got the right constraint so that only one eighth of the quadrant is what we are going to use for our simulation. Then the final thing here is to apply our tensile, you know, so I'll call it my tensile load. And it has to be associated with a loading step. And this will be attached to a reference point set. And for this system, which is 200 microns, so we're going to apply 10%, which is 20. So this is the loading that we have at this point, applied at this point. So, but for different cases, obviously we need to connect it to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my constraint and just call it constraint equation. So we're going to make a constraint equation, connect that so that the reference point, so one linked to the X front in one degree of freedom, one degree of freedom, one reference point set and minus one. If you are sure about what this constraint equation and how I'm using to set it up, then look at this video about porous media where I explain in detail the principle behind this kinematic constraint argument of how you can link a point to a surface and then apply loading to that point to deform the system. So this is what we have here. And then we can then basically, I can, I can say, okay, I'm going to create a copy of that. And this I'm going to call my extension. Okay. So the extension is fine. If you like the kind of content that I'm making and you're finding value in this, I do encourage you to like the video or maybe, you know, leave a comment of what is the particular thing that you really love about the strategy that I'm using here in simulating this tensile deformation. Or maybe you have other kind of problems you want me to address as part of making videos around hybrid composite or any other kind of material on, the, on this channel. Please do let me know and I'll be happy to read your comments and try and respond to them. A lot of the videos that are made on this channel are really by students requesting for certain videos to be made and I'm more than happy to do that. Thank you for your interest. So let's get ahead with this video. So the next thing we're going to do now is to create a copy of the next one, which we're going to call our Y tension. Okay, so within the Y tension, it's actually quite easy what we need to do. A few things we need to change. So if we go to our history output, so for the Y tension, we're now interested in RF2 and U2. So the deformation in the two that Y axis and the reaction force in the Y axis. So that's the first thing we'll change. And then if we go into the constraint equation, we are now interested in Y top. So the Y top and the two direction, because we are now deforming on the Y top here and pulling it in the two direction. Okay, so that's fine. And then we can then think about our loading. So the tensile load will no more be in the Y axis, one X axis, it will be in the Y axis. So what we have is that we're deforming in the Y direction, linking it to that phase. And that's really all we need to do with the tensile case, Y tension. So we create a copy of this model and do the Z tension. Okay, so with the Z tension, what do we do? So the same kind of situation under the history output, we now want to go to the third axis. Okay, and our constraint equation will have to be linked to the Z front because that's where we are applying our load in the third axis and that's fine. And our boundary condition in terms of tensile load will move from the Y axis onto the Z axis. So in this case, we are pulling in this case and it's linking to that surface and we have all that. So we've got all three tensile compression, everything set. So we just need to create the jobs for them. Okay, so we've got all three models. We simply need to submit them and then look at the result. So now that we finished setting up the model and submitted it, so this is sort of result we are going to get. And this is for the extension of deformation, the transverse extension deformation. So if we look at the displacement, so and then we'll try and animate it. So it shows you the simulation that we are getting. So a classic unidirectional loading sort of simulation, but you can see the contribution of the different constituents are different. So you've got the 
the a glass here and the pineapple there and you can look at the deformation that you're seeing on the structure you know how how you look it looks like and showing you different kind of behavior obviously the size of this fiber is sort of making it not allowing it to contract as much and there's quite a lot of metrics around it so you end up with this sort of deformation what i'm going to do is to look at the strain so and clearly, clearly if you're going to show you there's a clear you you know um, stress shear band through which the structure is become weak and it's going to fail across and it's very interesting it fails in the uh, this the synthetic component and then travels into the natural fiber components as we see in this study so we can look at the plastic strain and plastic strain is similar to the elastic strain as well the total strain so everything about this model looks as expected and very interesting so if we then go on to the next case which is the white tension again with the white tension we can also animate it and see it's giving us a, a different result comparable so if we look at the total strain so you could see again there's a clear region through which failure is nicely at this angle nearly 45 to 50 degrees through which failure is happening and this is classic behavior expectation for unidirectional composites so we can look at the plastic strain and it's the same story that is being told here so we can then look at the z tension and z tension in this case that we're applying load in the fiber direction and not surprisingly, you get a nice dominant deformation with the e glass fiber, which is obviously have the higher strength and the higher modulus dominating the behavior. So the greater stress history is captured by the e glass fiber. And this is this is really one of the beautiful things with hybrid compost because then you can control where you want the dominant load to be and where the less dominant load to be. So you can tune it adaptively and have a certain different property depending on what you're trying to model. And so that's sort of what we are seeing. There's a, a big load bearing right at the base compared to the top of this application. Clearly what we want to do ultimately is to be able to get, get, get the stress strain data from this. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. So we're going to extract the data, the stress strain data. So if you click here, which say create it white data, so looking for the history output. So based on the history output for the tensile test in one direction. So you're looking at F1 and U1, which is the reaction force in the X axis and displacement in the X axis. So if you plot that, it gives you the data that we have and manipulate this data. So under plugins, tools, Excel utilities, so we get the current plot. So what this will do is that it will explore this data into an Excel file. And this is what our Excel file is. So I'm going to copy that data. I've prepared a template, an analysis spreadsheet inside Excel that we can use to make this analysis easy. And that's what it looks like. So for the extension, so we'll come in here and paste the data that we have. And then it will generate the plot for the stress strain data. So these are the length, width and height of this material. This is the surface area of the X face x z front x front face so that means the width times the height is what you're using in this instance and if you multiply them you get the area and then you calculate the young's modulus which is the slope of this elastic part and also calculate this trend which is the absolute maximum of this data which is coming up at 78 so we'll go back to abacus and do the same for the y-axis this is the data you get and then if you do the same for the z-axis you get this data so we can then compare all the three data that we've obtained so this looks as the extension y tension and z tension and this also gives you the result that you get and that's sort of the kind of result that you really want to get from this unique exact tensile deformation if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe so that we contents like this are made You'll be the first to see it if you're interested in how to set up this virtual domain for this model then this is a video for you if you just want to get a holistic analysis of the rv modeling of a hybrid composite this is a video that you can look at thank you for interest in this channel and bye bye